Hi everybody, it's Ginger with TGS Source. And today, there are several stories all along the same kind of lines. The CDC getting hammered. Um, lawsuits. Lawsuits are flying all the way around. And mass. So this one is from Red Voice Media. I'll send you the link. 172, 100,000 admissions of fraud. We, the CDC, are responsible for some pretty dramatic, pretty public mistakes. Then also, um, we've got Naomi, Dr. Naomi Campbell and a couple of senators that have filed a petition. Uh, this is act actually Dr. Henry Healy. He's of that same, that same movement. Um, let's see, beyondthecon.com, I think he is. It's in the video that I clipped for you. Okay, you guys, um, also, there's some, a jet went over a whole beach and was spraying who knows what. You'll see. I'm putting together, maybe we'll do it each day, a little uh, something like, this is what's happening. I'll name it something arbitrary, and you'll peek in there and see if there's any any stories that you can use. All right, you guys, I love you. Praise his holy name, y'all. And hold the intention of love and peace for all humanity when you're in prayer. You know, just see it. Just see it as it is that way. You know, the kingdom in heaven, bring it here. It is within. It is here. So when we set our intention and we meditate and we see only the good, you know, or, and even labeling it can be a block um, for some folks. So anyway, just... Just be in your, your best, happy place of peace and joy at all times. Okay. I love you guys. Um, get that feeling of gratitude and love in you. And just see everything as gratitude and love. And, and know that things happen for a reason. There's no coincidences. Um, you know, and you're, if you're fearful, just put the fear at the feet of the Creator and look at it as like perhaps we chose to like do a big video game or something and make it real. Because this isn't real. This is an illusion. And it can be whatever you want it to be. Love or fear. Okay. Glory to the King, y'all. On Thursday, a group of whistleblowers had a meeting to discuss health violations from the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration. You know, the people that are flying you in airplanes yeah. when you travel. This meeting was put on by a group of advocates for them. They're called the U.S. Freedom Flyers, and they speak on behalf of people who work in aviation. Yeah, so they had a they had a big Zoom meeting. I mean, look at all the people who were in attendance in this Zoom meeting. There were a lot of people, whistleblowers, uh, doctors, um, soldiers, uh, pilots. The meeting um, w featured a whistleblower, Senior Aviation Inspector McGray, uh, Bruce McGray. He's a safety inspector at the FAA. He's leading the charge right now of people in the industry who are concerned with the way the FAA dealt with this pandemic, COVID and COVID vaccines overall. Um, and this is one of the many cases we've been discussing it here on the show in which companies are facing litigation over these vaccine mandates, right? So, yeah. I mean, I mean, we're going to hear it from like, like Tyson Chicken and a whole bunch of other companies who are facing these vaccine mandate litigation right now. Yes, but it's especially scary inside aviation because these pilots are saying we have been what they're calling vaccine injured right? So they had some adverse reactions to taking something that was mandated for their field to keep their job. And if they are now continuously sick, well, that's an issue. One of the things that Inspector McGray points out is that the FAA has a policy currently still and always has had that no pilot may take a drug until it's been one year since full FDA approval. What? This makes sense, right? Obviously, who here, raise your hand if you want your pilot on something experimental, right? In case, right? I don't. I'm, 
I mean, Sorry. alcohol is Sorry. not ex experimental at all, and they don't let them drink. And they're not allowed to drink, right? right? And they they even have like Sleeping. you know very yeah very. Um, uh, uh, strenuous sleep logs about mm -hmm. all of that stuff, right? Now, again, this is the, the FDA's policy that no pilot may take a drug until it's been one year since full FDA the approved. FAA. This is the FAA. So let's get not get our initialisms or what is it? Initialism acronym that mixed up. An acronym is something you can pronounce as a word, like NASA. Okay. And an initialism is something that's not a word. So FAA okay. is an initialism because right, we so don't say FA. Okay, so unless we start, do okay, you want to? No, no. So the FAA sure. has a policy that no pilot may take a drug until it's been one year since the full FDA approval of said drug. And if they do, according to Inspector okay. McGray, they don't get medical approval to fly. Now, despite this rule, the government used a blanket waiver for the COVID-19 vaccines without any documentary evidence and scientific studies. So this is an important question, right? Why was this vaccine given a pass when no other medication ever has? Uh, clearly, it was not based on documentary evidence or scientific studies. Um, we know exactly what started to be presented when, when human trials started, right? And so why? Why this political... Um, Curveball. And, and why wasn't Washington listening to this at all? Todd Callender is an attorney. He was on this call, the Zoom call. He kind of led it off, kicked off everything, kind of explaining how they tried to take this to Washington, to senators' offices. The only senator's office that even responded was Senator Ron Johnson's office. Nobody else, nobody else got back to him. Listen to what Todd Callender has to say. So we, we ran into deaf ears at the FAA. The inspector general came back and effectively said, there's nothing to see here. We're not going to investigate anything. So we're going to take things into our own hands. This, that's what this is about. We're all here together because we know that we're not going to get any help out of Washington. In fact, this is a global problem, folks. This is every government in the world doing the exact same thing. We're not going to get any help from any of our governments. This was planned over at least 40 years, at least from a legal perspective. It is a wow, and so I see people in our chat saying, "Wow, what we're in the UK, we haven't heard anything about this." Imagine that. So, when will you start hearing about pilots in the UK? When will you start hearing? Hey, everyone, it's uh, Dr. Naomi Wolf, and I'm here with one of my heroes. Truly, truly, one of. The, the good guys, the, the angels for humanity, the half dozen or so, sometimes up to a dozen, but then it dwindles, but he's always in the remaining half dozen, um, standing at the gate, protecting our species, human beings from truly demonic forces out yeah. prowling around these days. It's Dr. Henry Ely. And Dr. Ely is the founder of Energetic Health Institute. And he's much more than that, as uh, impressive as that is. He's also one of three uh, um, leaders, advocates, along with State Senator Kim Thatcher and State Senator Dennis Linthicum of Oregon, who have led the charge in filing a grand jury demand against the CDC. So I know you've got big news for us. Tell us more, Dr. Ely. What's the latest? Well, the latest is that we finally got a response from them. And of course, we anticipated it was going to be a motion to dismiss, which it is. But the motion to dismiss was number one filed late so we do have in the works a motion for a judgment a default judgment we may or may not get that you'll never know right but we also saw in there that they're arguing on the same principles that they've argued everything lack of standing and yeah. we actually are going to be able to thwart that immediately they also may have been, I can't tell you how many typos were in this <laughs> were in their response so yeah. clearly it was panicked right and uh, but what was really interesting was they said that we didn't process serve the former CDC director, Robert Redfield. Right. Oh, and, they're throwing someone else under the bus. Right. They, and so and so what we said was, well, actually, we did. Here's our affidavit. His wife actually signed for it, which is proof of service. Right. And she did so at her home that he owns. So. 
they we we have so many avenues now to attack their motion to dismiss and we're going to be filing it on september 12th so right now between now and september 12th it's all about getting the call to action out we have a great campaign in conjunction with stanford health freedom to uh, get people if you agree with the call for a grand jury investigation you can sign on to the petition say i support this and that's something we're going to get all those numbers right about 150,000 right now but we want to get over a million and wow. then we want to share that with the judge because we have to show this there's yeah. significant public interest in seeing a grand jury investigate these uh, allegations of criminal data fraud and right. willful misconduct absolutely and 150,000 is a huge number already I right mean, could pass <laughs> bills in most states with that kind of right. public support um and at a federal level it's also hugely hugely impressive so congratulations well everyone listening go to where to sign up for to give you support go to beyondthecon.com and we're actually going to be putting that right on the home page so you don't have to even sort or go anywhere the instructions are right there and we have everything laid out so that you can read the background on this the timeline a short little synopsis of who where what when kind of deal learn a little bit about myself and Senator Dennis Linthicum and Senator Kim Thatcher but you can also download two important documents the grand jury petition that was filed and then questions and answers FAQs about what a grand jury is because most people don't know that this is our greatest sword that we have right now in the legal system.